welcome to Angie Speaks Stronger Than Sprinters. Thank you, Dr. Brown, for joining us once again. Can you hear me? Thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us, everyone, in our ongoing series of Clarity in Crisis. Today uh, is episode seven. We certainly need some clarity in crisis these days. And of course, my phone would start to ring right now. So I need to put it on do not disturb. Please bear with me for a second. <laughs> so difficult. So I am back. Welcome to Clarity in Crisis. Life happens. That's just how it is. Yep. Um, so yep. our, our, our focus today is forgiveness and how forgiveness will keep us in good health uh, as we maintain or help us to maintain good health when we learn to forgive, help us to have healthy relationships. Um, so Dr. Brown, today, before I jump in, I just want to again welcome the audience and say thank you whether you're watching live or on the replay. We are open to your questions regarding forgiveness. Forgiveness sounds a lot easier than it actually is. People throw that term around a lot. You just need to forgive. But we all know that it's no easy feat. So in light of everything that's going on with, with our environment, forgiveness is probably going to be very, um, I'm sure it's going to be critical in this season. Um, but Dr. Brown, from your experience, your 20 years of experience, what or how would you define forgiveness? So forgiveness is a process. That's the first thing that's uh, important to know. Um, mm -hmm. It's not just something that happens right away because it's very complicated. You know, as human beings, we all need to feel love. We all need to feel like we belong. And mm -hmm. the way we do that is through relationships. And um, if we were still in... Um, well, if, if, if we were not in this environment where we have imperfect people, okay, we, we wouldn't have to worry about forgiving, unfortunately. Sorry, um, people, if we were in this environment where what? I didn't hear that part. So if living today in an, imper in an imperfect environment, okay. we don't have to worry about the fact that somebody may offend us. Mm. But intentionally or unintentionally, offenses are going to come. The problem is, what are we going to do with it? And the best thing to do with it is to let it go. Let so it go. <laughs> many well, people define forgiveness in, in many ways, but I think the um, basis of it is letting the offense go. And exactly how do we do that? I, I am the student today. How do you let it go when, I mean, this person really didn't just offend you. He just, for example, dehumanized you or totally disrespect you. I mean, to your, to your face sometimes. How do you do it? Well, I think... One of, one of the main ways that you do it is you have to realize that, well, holding on, first of all, holding on to the offense mm -hmm. does absolutely nothing to punish the other person. In fact, what it does is it punishes the person who holds on to the offense. But it can and feel so good, Dr. Brown. Sometimes it feels so good to hold on. You feel like you're some Revenge. kind of fulfillment from holding on. I felt these things. That's why I'm, you know, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying I felt these emotions. Well, I think most of us do feel these emotions because we want to be loved. We really want to be loved. And we were created to be loved. But because we live in the world in which there are cruel people, we don't always experience that. And yes, the, the desire to retaliate is real. I, I've gone through it myself. However, I know that it doesn't pay. It just does not pay. 
In fact, um, it hurts. And why, if you've already been hurt by someone, why subject yourself to further hurt through that person? You would you want know, to get... This sounds logical. It really does. Could it be that... Well, first of all, tell me, what are the benefits of forgiveness? What, what, what are the benefits of forgiving anyone? Well, the biggest benefit is that you hold on to your sanity, your mental health, and, <laughs> and your physical health. So, okay. um, so in layman terms, I won't go crazy. And, and you have good health. I have good health. Okay. Peace and joy. I, I, I think these things are, are quite worthwhile, but specifically the benefits of having of forgiveness is having a healthy relationship. And mm -hmm. you know, that's important. We, if we want to be loved, we can't run around being hateful and angry and causing other people to have to pay for what someone else did to us. Uh, other people won't know what we're going through and they'll assume that, um, that, that the feelings that you're having, the anger, the revengefulness, um, all the negativity they'll assume is going to them. And then that prevents um, a relationship that could have been beneficial to you. Whether we're talking about um, intimate relationships, you know, uh, um, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, relationship with your family, relationship with peers, you know, we know so we know a that relationships are very, you know, logically we know that relationships are critical to our well-being, to that whole thing of the self-care triad, you know relationships are, are definitely an integral part of us being the best version of ourselves, healthy relationships, not just relationships, but healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. But somehow, even though we know this, the logic of it, we, uh, is it fair to say that people don't make the connection between the fact that it will help, you know, it helps them to thrive and this, this idea of being forgiving, do you, do you think? Maybe that's where the disconnect is, that they don't make the connection that the two go together to, to have a, you know, well-being, to have well-being or to thrive. Is that the issue? I think most, most don't make that connection, mainly because education is not centered on helping us to live our best life. It's centered on helping us to help other people live their best lives by creating money for them. So therefore, mm -hmm. if we want things in our lives, we have to take time to know how to examine ourselves, to examine what we've been through and, and to make choices about do these things stay in our lives or do we get rid of them? And no, it's not a feeling thing. Mm -hmm. Forgiving somebody has nothing to do with how you feel. It is just a simple conscious decision that you make. I am going to do this. Now, why am I going to do this? I'm going to do this because you've hurt me. I recognize that you've hurt me. I'm not pretending that you didn't hurt me. Um, right. But um, because you've hurt me, I'm going to take the steps to make sure that you don't hurt me anymore. And one of those things is not to stay connected to your pain. Mm. Not staying connected to the pain, is that the same thing as not staying connected to the person? Well, no, it depends on whether or not the person wants to change. Now, sometimes people are willing to change. And in that case, you still maintain the right to make a decision about whether or not you want to be involved with this person. It helps to, you know, maybe reflect on your own self times maybe when you've also made mistakes and hopefully you've been forgiven. And if you've been forgiven, then, you know, that would help you to be able to um, forgive someone else. Um, That's valid. So from what I'm getting from you so far is that forgiveness is a decision. It's not a feeling. 
which is really, um, <laughs> it's a revolutionary idea for some of us because we wait, I know a lot of times I wait to have a feeling, you know, I just don't, I have to feel good about it. Um, but you're saying it has nothing to do with feelings necessarily. It's a decision. And then most things are a decision. Anything to move us forward really is a decision. If I get up each morning and wait to feel like getting out of bed, I mean, I'm telling you, it will never happen because I always want to sleep some more. So, because I feel so comfy. So the, the idea that uh, forgiveness is a decision is, is very, very, it's a good nugget. Thank you for that. And then the well, idea that, go ahead. Let me add one other thing. One thing that makes that decision easier is the principles that you choose to live your life by. You see? Mm. Principles guide us. So therefore, we may be feeling all sorts of things, but if we live our lives by principles that say um, revenge is not okay, although we may feel like we want to do this, we know just based on who our identity we just don't go there. Now, everybody doesn't have those principles. Some people have the principle of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and that's real. That means you hurt me, you kill my cat, I'm killing your dog and children too, you see? <laughs> it's not funny, it's true. <laughs> you don't kill the dog and the children. Somehow you love the two of them in the same bucket. <laughs> okay, it's hilarious. It's, it's funny. human, you see? <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> wow. And in addition to the fact that it, it's a decision, you're saying the benefits include having healthy relationships, which is probably number one, because it helps us to thrive. We're all after relationships. It's one of the yeah. most basic human need. And mm -hmm. yet we have such a hard time forgiving. It's so contradictory to think that we're going to have healthy relationships, but we don't want to forgive. Um, it also helps improve our mental health, like you said, not going wacko, uh, less anxiety and stress. We live in a very stressed out society or system. I mean, there's so many things to contribute to, to stress. And right now during the pandemic, we're especially stressed out. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking forgiveness may be, may be even harder during this time. Um, it lowers blood pressure, fewer symptoms of depression, stronger immune system, improves, saves me from a heart attack. Wow, that's a big one. And helps my self-esteem. So all these benefits should help us to make the connection between why it's so important to forgive and having a healthy sense of self or well-being. So why do we find it hard to forgive? Well, because what remember we all want to be loved. Mm -hmm. And most of us take time, some not as much time as we need to be before connecting with other people. But we take some amount of time before connecting with other people. And during that time, we feel that we can trust that individual. And when we find out that we cannot trust that individual, it just shakes our world. Um, right. It creates deep, deep hurt. And when that deep hurt is there, um, we just go into our natural instinct. You know, if, you, if one animal attacks another animal, it's gonna attack back. And so right. our animal instincts kick up. But what we, you know, we are more than the animal. We have principles, we have choices. And while we need to be safe, we need to be safe in a way that um, aligns with who we are. Mm. So do you have a personal example from your, your lifetime and experience of how you have forgiven, how it was hard for you, how you overcame? Something that we can sink our teeth into, some juicy story? <laughs> yes, I have many stories. I'm thinking about one now. One uh -huh. that was especially painful to me um, as an um, early Christian, I, I, um, I used to do Bible studies on my job, you know, during the lunchtime, and I met a lot of people, and out of that, I was invited to a Christian business women's conference, 
Mm-hmm. And when I went there, I heard this woman speak and she sounded like an angel that just floated out of heaven, you know? And then <laughs> asked, yes, you know, we know this. She asked me to become a part of her ministry. And it was uh-huh. on the it was on the Upper East Side, you know, big brown stone, five floors. Oh my God, Every, everything was wonderful. It was really a multi-million dollar ministry that had been around from the 1900s. Um, a socialite created this ministry so that missionaries coming back to America who, you know, had been away for 20 years mm-hmm. or so, they would have a place to come to. Now, mm-hmm. what I didn't realize is that um, she had a manipulative plan in place, you see, and I fit right into it. She was being nice and she was doing all the things to make me feel good. Mm-hmm. She, she was able to read me and some people can do that. She was a psychopath. Imagine that. Yes, they do go to church too. Okay. <laughs> we know these things. Okay? Uh-huh. We know things. he was a psychopath. Many people followed him, you see? But nevertheless, Jim Jones. Jim oh, Jones. Yeah. He was a psychopath. And, uh-huh. and people um, hoping to have their needs met. Well, mm. I, I accepted her invitation to join the ministry because I was looking for a place to have my Bible studies outside of the, um, bu- outside of my business. Mm-hmm. And what she wanted was she wanted to be reinstated as the president. Now, people worked hard to get her out of there, but she was so manipulative that she worked hard and got most of the people out who were opposed to her becoming the president again. Mm. And so after she got them out, she had to replace them. And so I was part of that replacement, you see? And Uh so she was the sweetest thing. She and her husband, they were the sweetest thing until we left that boardroom and she was appointed president. Her Her whole continence changed. Like she just shut down. I was like, oh, it was it was rather shocking, you see. Wow. Um, and and from then, she she felt she didn't need me anymore, and mm-hmm. so and and there were things that I was beginning to challenge, the same as the other people that left. She just wanted to do her thing with no questions. Mm-hmm. And what during the process of all that, one day I ran into uh, this man who was one of the people that was put out. Now this uh-huh. ministry not only had a location on the Upper East Side, but also up in Massachusetts, uh, mm-hmm. in the Berkshires. You know, that's we talking big money there, okay? So when I went up there, I ran into this fellow mm-hmm. and um, I went to church and it was the lady's birthday and I was trying to find a way to mend things, you know? And mm-hmm. so I had a birthday card and I asked him what he signed it. And when he looked at it, I saw this look on his face. He became so hard. And I thought, what? Clearly, he, didn't let, he hadn't let go, clearly. <laughs> the man was so affected by all of this that he developed cancer. Oh, wow. Yes. And, you know, anger, um, anger leads to a lot of chronic illnesses, and cancer was one of them. And... Wow. He still, he needed to forgive. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know all of this, but when I gave him the, the card to sign, he looked at it. He had a real, you know, negative response. Mm-hmm. But then after that, he turned and he said, no, he said, okay, I'm going to sign it. And he signed mm-hmm. the card. And then when I returned um, to, to the ministry, I gave her the card, and when she looked at the card, I saw that she she was shocked that this man's uh-huh. name was. So she did something, and she was very clear about what she did. Now, mm-hmm. how when I looked at that, and I saw up front the fact that this man mm-hmm. suffered cancer, and I and in this field, I run across many people who have all sorts of illnesses because of emotional pain and letdown. So I decided I didn't want to go that way. 
I was going to forgive this lady. I mm-hmm. honestly, see, I recently come out of the military. So mm-hmm. the fight was in me. Okay. Not just the fight, the kill was in me. People don't the recognize kill. me. Um, you know, the job of a military person is to kill or support the kill. Basic. Wow. So and and I had lived on death row during my military time. So it was nothing for me other than mm-hmm. think about my kids, you know. Um, I didn't want to leave them. You You're know? a tough woman. <laughs> oh, no, we're all tough. We all, you're a tough woman. We mm-hmm. rise to w- what we need to survive. That is the reality, you see? So in the process of forgiving her, one mm-hmm. of the things I did, somebody told me about it. Listen, go see a chiropractor. <laughs> That was one of the best things I could do. At the time, you know, I felt comfort from that, you know, after you get used to it, I felt comfort from that adjustment. Mm -hmm. And also during that time, you got a full body massage. Oh dear God, I didn't have to pay for it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, and then, and then practical exercising. It's basically Mm -hmm. taking care of myself emotionally so that Mm -hmm. I, physically and and emotionally and that allowed me to let go of that woman now ultimately i did leave that ministry you know because it she she wasn't changing and unbeknownst to me i put the woman back in power so for me to stay there would have meant constant pain and i just didn't want to do that so so that's 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 one of the number one reasons people don't forgive, just deep hurt. But you were able to overcome. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, not, not, not it's, and, and this is the spiritual part. You see, I talked about the natural things that I did, but also, you know, in spite of the fact that she wasn't who she represented, God mm-hmm. word, God's word works. Mm-hmm. And it worked for me. You see, so that, that I think was a major thing to help. Hopefully next week we'll get into the spiritual part. But right now we can focus on the natural part of forgiving. Okay. So you, you already alluded to some of this, to the effects of not forgiving. Um, can you just reiterate that again? Because I think that people need to, to really consider the effects of not forgiving. Um, well, not forgiving... When you don't forgive someone, it creates anger, bitterness, grudges, ill health, which doesn't stay with your relationship and that person. It passes on to other people, whether you mean to do it or not. How? You have less patience. Mm. You know, sometimes you people can do things that trigger something that the other person did and it, it brings you back to that place. It's, it's just a very, very unhealthy place to be. Also, you can become lost in pain. Mm. And by that, I mean time, years can pass by without you even realizing that you have been stuck. And I, and I think of this, um, this movie that I saw a long time ago about some lady. She went to the altar hoping to get married and the guy dumped her. And um, he gave her some rose or something like that. This woman, when she was trying to get married, she was 20 years old. And Mm -hmm. in the movie, she was, she was an old woman, still Mm. sitting, you know, um, going over that old pain. And you'll be surprised that that happens more often than people realize. People stay in relationships that they're not happy with. And they re- develop resentment. They're afraid to leave, um, and they just get lost. The inability, the inability to let go. Yes, the whole fam. They raise kids being lost like that, not being able to connect with their kids, not being able to um, advance in their jobs. They are just stuck. So that's real. Then the other thing is that it can lead you to become depressed and anxious. And really, as quiet as it's kept, depression is just you being angry with yourself. 
So that's another person that depression is being angry with yourself. So you got to forgive yourself as well. Yes. The beginning of it is forgiving yourself, not mm. because you did anything necessarily to create it, but you know, somehow people need to blame other things. And so, you know, if no one else blames you, you may end up because you wanted that relationship, you may end up blaming yourself. You wow. see, we psychological gymnastics. Mm -hmm. So there you are depressed, here you are anxious, and that's not the way to advance in life, not in personal relationship, not in business relationship. Then wow. the other thing that happens is sometimes you can feel like your life has no meaning. Wow. Um, that's worse, hopelessness. Yes, things are pointless. And, mm. and people can and do get to the place where they think things are so pointless that what's the use in living? That's wow. serious. That mm -hmm. is the worst. And then um, you lose valuable connections. That's, mm. you, you just, sometimes, <clears throat> you know, someone, people are always observing us. Right. And we never know what gifts people can give us, but if they observe us and they find that, oh, this person is negative, Mm -hmm. They will be drawn, they will be pushed away from you rather than drawn towards you. And there, you know, you will lose things without even know, knowing that you lost it. I, I these think are all, these are all mm -hmm. the effects of unforgiveness, not being able to forgive. Sounds yes. like a boatload of negativity and distress in your life. And you may not, and if you don't make the connection, you'll stay this way. That's the scary part. If I'm unable to make the connection between good health and forgiveness i'm going to be in this boat that you're talking about being stuck hopeless mm -hmm. and feeling like and sick physically and emotionally sick wow basically living a lie mm -hmm. you're living a lie and the lie is somebody lied to you and you believed it and you won't let it go that's that's a that's that's amazing. Somebody lied to you. You believe, and most of the times we we claim we don't be, want liars in our life, or we claim we don't believe lies, but we we do, whether or not we are aware of it, and it affects or it impacts our life in such a big way. So, well, let me say, go ahead. One more, you see, the reason why we hold on to negativity is for survival purposes, but it works against us. You see, good things we don't have to fear, but pain we have to worry about. And so until we figure out how to resolve that, it stays in our heads. Sometimes you can't resolve it. That's why you have to let it go. Let it go. So how do I forgive? It's a choice. That's, that's, the, that's what I'm getting from here, from talking to you today more than anything else. It is a choice. And I have to recognize the value. We mm -hmm. have to recognize the value of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and also, how, go mm -hmm. ahead. No, I'm sorry, go ahead. But how do you identify what needs healing and who needs to be given and for what? How, how, how do you do that? Well, hopefully you have people around you who care about you and, and who are aware of these kinds of issues. You know, mm -hmm. mo I think few people get through the world without having that kind of an experience and um, being able to talk to you. You have to be open to um, hearing what someone has to say. And, and if you have no one, if you have no close family member, friend, hopefully if you are involved in like a church or or let I will say a church activity, you can go to your minister and talk to them. Um, I think if you have a minister and you can't talk to them, what's the point, you know? I mean, he's supposed to be a shepherd. I understand some people are so so um, focused on impressing the minister that they can't get any use out of him or her, you know? <laughs> you don't believe in that. So it's important to be transparent and honest is your point. The, the, the honesty, yeah. the transparency. But I think a lot of that will roll into our next session, which has to do with your the spiritual aspect of 
forgiveness because it's really hard to do those things if your spiritual foundation is not set. I, I mean, for the longest time, I wasn't transparent. I'm still working on it. I wasn't honest because I didn't want to look bad. I don't want to seem like I don't have it together. I don't want to not appear that I don't know what I'm doing. So until I got my spiritual foundation where I focused on, for me, how, what is Jesus like? Who is he? Is, you know, what is his character like? It was hard for me to really make those adjustments to become transparent, vulnerable, and being honest and say, well, this is how I'm doing. And it doesn't, it's not a pretty picture right now. So until I get to that stage spiritually and do that work, it's going to be hard to really expose myself to someone else to help me when I'm in a situation where I'm stuck because of lack of forgiveness. Yes, you're right. But in terms of other, other practical things that we can do, um, it helps to keep a journal of your thoughts because then you can start to make connections what you're feeling and what's going on around you and um think about time when you hurt people you know we're not perfect either and i know i try not to think about that think about when I'm, it's, it's so crazy <laughs> when somebody hurts me i mean the world is coming to an end but for, i remember when i just got married my husband would tell me i do stuff and i'm like Really, I'm really sorry that you feel hurt. Or if, you, if you're hurt, I'm really sorry. Some kind of lame apology because I truly did not connect to, to his pain that I caused him. I didn't see it. But let him say something in the wrong tone. Oh my gosh. We'll be talking about, about that for weeks until I feel resolved. So that's a very important part of it to being able to connect to other people's pain and being able to see when I've hurt or when you've hurt someone to, you know, extend them the same grace that you want them to extend you. It took me a long time to learn this lesson because <laughs> I could just never see it. I was so obtuse. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> I can laugh about well, it now, but. That is a process. You see, it's a mm -hmm. process. It's not going to happen overnight. So mm -hmm. don't, you know, give yourself space and time. Right. And get help. Now, one of the things that I'm doing now, more specifically, is starting a group for people who need to deal with forgiveness. Mm. So if you feel that you want to be a part of the group, I encourage you to join. Absolutely. So Dr. Brown is paying it forward. If you come through the Eve Speaks platform to get some support, especially during this time of crisis that's all around us, I mean, we've got crisis exponentially these days. Um, we're inviting you to join. It's free through this platform and you can get the support you need to navigate for the help you may need emotionally to get back on your feet or to maintain your health because we all know how important forgiveness is to our physical, mental, and spiritual health. Um, we're out of time just about. Thank you for, for joining us. And when you see the replay, I hope you got something that will help you in this process. The link for this for the support group is eSpeaks.com slash programs slash heal. Or join us in our community group, Angie Speaks Stronger Than Sprinters. Yes, we are striving to be the next best version of ourselves. So we have to fight to be stronger than our sprinters. As for Dr. Brown, you can also reach her on her Instagram at ask underscore Dr. Mom. 20 years of experience in private practice. She certainly has a few good nuggets for you to help you in your journey. Once again, thank you for joining us. And we will see you next week in another episode of Angie Speaks, a derivative of Eve Speaks, where we are fighting to be stronger than our sprinters. Have a great day. And thank you, Dr. Brown, for joining us again. Thank you for paying yes. it forward to support people during this time of crisis. Um.